terrorist organization is Hassan Youssef. His son, his name is Mossab, Hassan Youssef. He wrote a book called Son of Hamas, uh, which we have on our uh, sites and uh, which I would strongly recommend. And uh, we've worked most of the day to get him as a guest, and I want to thank him uh, for being with us right now. Mossab Hassan Youssef, how are you, sir? Hi, Mark. I'm good. Thank you for having me on your show. Well, it is a pleasure to have you. You're an extremely brave young man. And I want to ask you several questions. Many people in the audience don't know about you. They don't know a lot about you. Some do. First of all, I want, I want you to introduce yourself. Tell everybody who your father is and how you came to, de- uh, came to decide that you needed to break away from Hamas. Oh, wow. So the, the, are you asking me to uh, read Take the Take your book? time. Oh, that, yeah, well, <laughs> well just okay, summarize uh, for us a little bit. Uh, sure, sure. Well, my name is Mossab. I'm uh, the oldest uh, son of uh, Sheikh Hassan Yusuf. Sheikh Hassan Yusuf is the top Hamas leader today in the West Bank uh, territories, uh, Palestinian territories. Um, uh, my father basically uh, established the Hamas movement side uh, by side with Ahmad Yassin and other Hamas leaders from the beginning. And uh, at some point of my life when I was in prison, I discovered the brutality of my father's organization. Basically, they were torturing and killing uh, Hamas, other Hamas members. So Hamas versus Hamas, Palestinian versus Palestinian. And I was shocked uh, by that truth. And I came to see a different face uh, of the organization. And uh, since that point, I was afraid that one day Hamas uh, achieved uh, uh, their goal of uh, controlling uh, the Palestinian territories because I was afraid that Hamas is going to kill the Palestinians, first of all. Um, and basically, I uh, argued and uh, I tried to, to debate everybody, but there was no way for me to continue in that uh, area. Uh, I couldn't stand uh, silent about, about suicide bombing attacks because suicide bombers we're killing Israelis, Palestinians, Americans, all type of people. And uh, uh, I worked uh, together with the Israeli intelligence not to serve one side against the other side, uh, to serve humanity, to stop suicide bombing attacks. And uh, we were uh, thankfully successful at stopping uh, dozens of suicide bombing attacks. And uh, from my father's point of view, he considered that as a betrayal. And from the movement's point of view, they considered me as a traitor. Uh, and uh, for me, I am okay if they want to accuse me, whatever they want to accuse me. Um, I rise uh, above their accusations. I rise above uh, their idea of who I am or, or their perception. I think uh, we did the right thing and uh, will continue uh, to serve uh, uh, my fellow man. Uh, and we'll continue, continue to uh, transcend uh, the cultural and the political uh, barriers. Now, Masab, I'm talking to Masab Hassan Youssef, the oldest son of the leader of Hamas. How old were you when you broke away and decided uh, you were going to get, you're going to leave this? Well, when I was arrested, I was arrested at the age of uh, 18. I spent 16 months in prison. That was the first time. And uh, okay, let me start. Uh, arrested was, by whom? I was arrested by the Israelis, mm-hmm. uh, and I spent time in Israeli prison where Hamas. Uh, other Hamas prisoners were there. So now in prison, yeah. in prison, Hamas was suspicious of some collaborators who gave information to Israel. Most of those collaborators, or what Hamas thought that they were collaborators, they were innocent people. But Hamas was very angry, and they wanted to take revenge from anybody who was suspicious. So they tortured and they killed those people, uh, uh, even though they were innocent. So other prisoners in the prison tortured yes, and killed right. uh, uh, Hamas members? Yes, uh, Hamas uh, prisoner uh, versus Ham- other Hamas prisoner, which, you mm-hmm. know, uh, again, brought me to question the real nature of my father's movement. So you're 18 years old, and you get out of prison, and what do you do? Well, when I was released from prison, uh, the uh, Israeli intelligence uh, outreach uh, to me. And uh, they asked uh, with the name of uh, humanity, you know, for humanitarian uh, reasons to uh, 
to work and help them uh, capture suicide bombers before they reach their target. Now, suicide bombers, basically, they were uh, targeting uh, buses, schools, hospitals, universities, wherever, you know, uh, they could reach. And uh, uh, hundreds of people were dying. You know, that that was brutal, if you remember, about 10 to 15 years ago. Oh, yes. So uh, during that time, you know... It, uh, even though, you know, I, I was helping my father's worst enemy, you know, for me, I was not serving my uh, enemy's agendas, you know, or this side's agendas and that side's agendas. You know, it, it was, if a suicide bomber reached their target, this meant uh, the death of dozens of people. You know, that was like, uh, I couldn't bear that anymore. And, you know, by the influence of uh, the Christian teaching, let's say the Christ teaching, love your enemy, Basically, I felt the responsibility uh, that instead of uh, killing each other, we need to find a way, first of all, to stop the bloodshed. And uh, with that inspiration and with the sense of responsibility, I agreed to work for the Israeli intelligence. And uh, we continued working uh, together till uh, I left uh, the region. You were born a Muslim. Are you still a Muslim? Well, today I consider myself Christ conscience uh, follower, if I can say. I don't belong to religion. I don't be uh, believe that religions uh, can lead uh, to, uh, uh, to, to heaven. I believe that it's a human conscience that will continue to evolve. And my inspiration is Christ conscience, to love our enemy, to, wo to love uh, one uh, another. You know, people hide behind the political and religious masks, and they keep smashing and killing each other on a daily basis. I, I am simply sick and tired of seeing the lies of, of political and religious groups. I think everybody needs to come to understand our responsibility, or otherwise we're going to destroy ourselves. Humanity will vanish if we continue to do this, taking advantage of state of chaos and confusion. People don't know what's going on in Gaza right now. You know, basically, uh, we have to take a stand with humanity. Uh, we, we, uh, politics are not going to take us uh, out of this uh, in this uh, circle of uh, violence. We need true, evolved conscience. Mossab, Mossab, can I hold you over to the next segment, please? Sure. All right. Mossab Hassan Youssef, I have a hard break, we call it. Son of the Hamas founder and current leader. Mossab Hassan Youssef, the eldest son of Hamas's founder and current leader. And a very brave man, in my opinion. I want to mention his documentary, which won major audience awards at the Sundance uh, Film Festival. It's titled The Green Prince, and here's the key. It releases in selected theaters nationally in September. So we're really going to want to pay attention to this. This may have a real Oscar buzz to it, but more importantly, it's going to be extremely informative the Green Prince, it comes out in September. I, for one, will see this, Mossab. Mossab, a couple of quick questions here. Hamas doesn't want peace with Israel under any circumstances, does it? Yeah, well, Hamas is... Uh, the misunderstanding about this uh, movement, that most people think Hamas is a political party, or they think uh, that Hamas is a national movement. Simply, Hamas does not have national agendas. Hamas has global religious ideological agendas that are very, very dangerous, not only against Israel, not only against uh, the Middle East uh, region. Uh, their goal is to uh, conquer the, the globe and build an Islamic state on every inch of our globe. Now, anybody who disagree, Hamas believes that they have the right and the authority to punish them by killing them. So basically, we're talking about uh, an ideological uh, movement that took advantage of a political cause where there is a huge state of confusion. Now they're using children and women as shield, and basically they're provoking the situation that will serve their uh, their uh, hidden agenda. This is what the Hamas movement is. Well, why why don't the uh, officials in the United States who are responsible for our protection and helping our allies why don't they get it? Well, again, you know, it's, if you did not grow up in that environment and if you don't understand uh, the nature of the movement, you know, for, for me, I was born in the heart of Hamas leadership. And I understand that we have enough intelligence. And I myself was part of the intelligence service for about 10 years 
uh, it's very hard sometimes to connect the dots. But today, I think more than any time in the past, the United States uh, uh, officials and decision makers, they need to take Hamas movement very, very seriously. Not because the United States only has interest in, uh, in the Middle East, because Hamas is coming sooner or later. You know, and the United States of America, its people, its values, uh, everything that this nation stands for is a target for Hamas movement. And Hamas movement, by the way, uh, inspires uh, all terrorist movements in the world, including Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda learned from Hamas. So basically, we, we, like, I think uh, the war is not over. This is going to continue. And I think we need to be prepared and unify, unify ourselves. Instead of mocking Israel now for doing the right thing, Israel in the Middle East is, is fighting on behalf of the free world. You know, if Hamas wins this uh, war against Israel, the free world will pay uh, this, uh, the price. Very, very well said. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Has there been a death warrant or anything put out on you by Hamas? And if Hamas were able to capture you, uh, what would they do? I don't know. I don't know. Let them, let them do whatever they want to do. You know, we choose to live uh, free. Uh, first of all, we are in a free country. Second, we are not doing anything wrong. Third, uh, we are doing uh, anything within our ability to uh, improve the future of uh, ourselves and uh, humanity. Uh, others are building, uh, like Hamas, uh, their biggest concern is to build uh, a military to target the civilians, to target humanity, to kill uh, any possibility for a human conscience to evolve. And uh, basically, we, this is the type of enemy we're dealing with. And now uh, we're not going to give them the gift of uh, hiding anywhere. I, I think all of us, even though Hamas is a brutal enemy and uh, Hezbollah and uh, Al-Qaeda and uh, name it, uh, we should uh, to live uh, free and uh, we are not afraid. Has your father, since you left uh, after uh, and, and joined uh, with with uh, in the Israeli intelligence and now have left that too. Has your father at any time since you left tried to reach you? No, he didn't. Since the publishing of uh, my book, uh, he disowned me publicly. And since uh, that moment, uh, we did not, uh, we have not spoken. Now, uh, I hope that this will change at some point in the future. I hope uh, that he will disconnect from Hamas movement. I hope that many people who support Hamas and uh, follow the lead of Hamas, will realize that they're going to self-destruction, uh, and uh, we will be able to communicate with them at some point and talk to them, just a human to a human. What do you make of the idea that uh, one of the proposals put on the table for a ceasefire was to give Hamas 40-some million dollars while the ceasefire is going on? I mean, isn't there, isn't there massive corruption within the leadership of Hamas? The, lots of this money doesn't get to the people. You know, the, the matter here is not a matter of corruption or not. Uh, you know, submitting to Hamas, Hamas is a terrorist organization, okay, by all means, because they use violence to achieve their political and religious agenda. And again, it's not a national or political party as uh, we know other uh, parties. Now, Hamas is willing to sacrifice as many Palestinians as it takes to uh, advance their ideology. Every penny that is paid to sustain, strengthen Hamas' position as a governor of the Gaza Strip right now is a crime against humanity. Basically, you, uh, uh, any side that gives Hamas money right now, they tell them, take the money, build more weapons, and in the future there's going to be a third and a fourth and a tenth Gaza war. Each time we're going to witness the death of thousands of innocent children again and again and again, and we won't be able to do anything about it. Instead of going Hamas, right, uh, giving Hamas money right now, and instead of being confused and not knowing what to do, as I'm talking now with due all respect to the American government. I know that I'm a guest in this country, and I love uh, Barack Obama, but I think uh, Obama needs to uh, uh, make a courageous uh, decision. This is where when leadership, true leadership, will come to the surface. Not uh, submitting to Hamas because we have a few children dying in Gaza Strip or even hundreds of them. Hamas is responsible for the death of those children. And if Hamas continues to uh, win this war against Israel because the public is confused uh, of the situation, there will be many other Gaza wars. 
This is the time to support Israel in its fight against this radical organization. This way, we will be supporting also the Palestinian people, the Palestinian children, by taking this cancer, uproot it out of the most populated uh, region uh, in, in the world, the Gaza Strip. Yes, and you're right. There is this notion that Hamas somehow represents the Palestinian people and uh, that Hamas uh, has nothing but good intentions for the Palestinian people. But it terrorizes its own citizens, as you pointed out, correct? Well, not only ter- ter- uh, terrifies them. Uh, terrorizes them. Or terrorizes it. You know, Hamas movement uh, took advantage of the conflict between the Palestinian Authority and Israel a few years ago. And they were building their military using the tunnels in secret. And they took over Gaza Strip uh, uh, and they surprised everybody with that takeover. Now, if you look at some of the YouTube videos, what Hamas did during that time, they threw their rival party, Fatah movement, they threw them alive from the 20th floor, alive. You know, this is what they did to their rival uh, party that it does not agree with their political point of view. So uh, they hit uh, the uh, Palestinian police officers uh, with uh, their RPGs. So basically what they're doing now against Israel, they already did it against their Palestinian rival organization. Uh, This will give you an idea that this organization, as a religious ideological organization, they don't care about Palestine, they don't care about Palestinian children or uh, any political cause. All they care about to conquer, they want to have the superiority uh, above all other uh, fellow humans. They think that they are... Uh, clean and everyone else is as clean. You know, I'm not saying this to make the movement look bad. This is, you know, their words uh, coming out of their mouth. So uh, practically, what we need, we need to understand the real major, uh, nature of this organization, and we all need to unify. Palestinians, Americans, Israelis. I would like to see the Palestinian Authority and still supporting Hamas right now to work with Israel together against this radical, foreign, strange body that is uh, sending Palestinians uh, to death on daily basis. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, I, uh, we're out of time. I wish we could spend another hour with you. Maybe you'll come back, Mossab. We really appreciate it. When your uh, documentary comes out in September, you have an open invitation. You're now going to get scores of invitations uh, as a result <laughs> of appearing here. But uh, really, we're, we're, we're very pleased to have you. You're very courageous. You're very honorable in what you're saying. I mean, it amazes me, given the indoctrination, given all the pressure, given all the threats and all the rest, that you were able to break free, because it's rare, isn't it? Well, you know, uh, thank God to uh, all the amazing leaders who uh, enlightened uh, my, uh, my journey. You know, Jesus Christ, Mahatma Gandhi, and many uh, modern-day uh, brave uh, philosophers and thinkers and writers, you know. Uh, this is how we all help each other. We are all the same. You know, there is no all this like political boundaries that we put American and uh, Middle Eastern and uh, Israeli and Jewish and Arab. We are all the same. And we we have to see through and understand the oneness of the human body and all unify against the uh, enemy that is incarnated in in uh, movements like Hamas and Hezbollah and Al Qaeda. You know, if we don't understand this unity and this oneness, you know, uh, our future is really in danger. Mossab Hassan Youssef, son, oldest son of the founder, leader of Hamas. The book is Son of Hamas. We've linked to it on my social sites. The documentary coming out in September, which I intend to see, the title, The Green Prince. Thank you. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Mark. All right. Take care. That was remarkable. I've been in this business not as long as some, but a long time. And I've interviewed many guests, many great guests, by the way. But that was particularly fascinating to me and illuminating to people, not so many in this audience, but to others who seem to think this is just about cutting a deal, having a ceasefire. Oh, it's just way over there. It's none of our business. This man is the eldest son of the terror leader of Hamas. And he made it clear time and time and time again in this interview These people have more in mind than even the destruction of Israel and the Jews. That they're part of this whole caliphate movement with the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all the rest of them. Hezbollah, the regime in Iran. This is the battle.
Hamas. And I remind you that here within our own country, this group CARE, this group CARE is the progeny of the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas. And I welcome any one of their spokesmen to come on this program and debate me anytime, right here. Now, on the heels of that interview, I want you to know uh, my buddy Steve Malsberg over at Newsmax, he was interviewing a member of the uh, Israeli Knesset, Danny Danan, a Likud party member, former uh, deputy minister of defense. Uh, he was uh, let go by Bibi Netanyahu, but that set all that behind. He relates that when Obama called Prime Minister Netanyahu, when our president called their prime minister, they had a tense phone conversation. In fact, Danan said it was not a pleasant conversation if you saw what happened. It was not pleasant. He said he, meaning Obama, was yelling and telling Prime Minister Netanyahu what he should do and what he should not do. Danan said, I tell you very frankly... We have a very close relationship with the U.S., the strongest ally of Israel. But this is not a way to treat the leader of an ally country. So I'm reading from Newsmax. According to Danan, the fireworks erupted as Obama urged a permanent end to the hostilities between Israel and Hamas. Obama's tone was uncalled for, Danan said. Quote, he's not talking, President Obama, with a leader of the Taliban. He's talking with the leader of the state of Israel, of the Jewish people, and when we are in a time of war. We need the backing and support of the U.S. Unfortunately, we do not have it now, and he means the government. It's not pleasant to hear such a voice when you have so much pressure. He said, I can tell you it is not easy for us when we uh, see our boys being buried on a daily basis, and he goes on about that. He said, so this is not a time when you expect to get such a conversation of such an attitude from a friend. He said, once again, Hamas is setting the tone for this operation. We must retake the initiative and correct the mistake made in this morning's cabinet. I mean, all right, he goes on. The point is, apparently Obama was yelling at Netanyahu. I'm sure both governments will deny it. But he calls up, making demands, bullying him around, telling him what to do. I insist on an unconditional ceasefire right now. That's what Obama did. What's he think? He's dealing with Boehner? I've got a pen and a phone, and if you don't act, I will. And what is this mindset, the way he talks the way he talks to ben, uh, Netanyahu? He would never talk to Putin that way. He would never talk to an Arab or a Muslim leader that way, ever. And while I'm on that subject, look what's going on in Miami. Look what's going on in Boston, in London, in Detroit, in Berlin. The rise of anti-Semitism, of Jew hatred overseas and here. Obama doesn't say a word about it. I assure you, I guarantee you, if this were happening to Muslims, Obama would take to the microphone and he'd talk endlessly about it. And what about the Christians that are being killed and mutilated overseas? Not a damn word. I want to underscore something that the son of the founder and leader of Hamas said on this program last hour. I want to underscore it so you can see how preposterous our foreign policy is our Secretary of State and President, in dealing with Hamas and what's going on there. The son of the founder and leader of Hamas, Mossab Hassan Youssef, said on this program, Hamas is not a nationalistic movement. It self-identifies as part of the global Islamic supremacist jihad, which makes sense since it's an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, as are most of these terrorist front groups. But we have administrations going back to Clinton always describing Hamas as a nationalist movement in order to con people into thinking their grievances are local and strictly political. They're not. They're just like bin Laden or Khomeini or the rest. They don't accept Western national borders. They seek to wipe out Israel to slaughter the Jewish people, but their goal is also global caliphate which means we are their targets, which means Europe is their target, which means Central and South America is their target, which means Africa is their target, which means Southeast Asia is their target, Asia is their target, the whole damn world. The Israelis are fighting these people as best they can under conditions that are difficult enough without the President of the United States calling the Prime Minister of Israel and yelling at him to surrender. 
and the Secretary of State going over there as a special pleader for Qatar, which funds terrorism, Turkey, which is now run by an Islamo-Nazi, and Hamas, for God's sakes. You understand more about Hamas in the Middle East if you've been listening to this program. You understand more about the PLO and its relation to the Grand Mufti and the Third Reich than any people in the United States. Cease fire? There is no cease fire. What we should be doing, ladies and gentlemen, is doing what the Prime Minister of Canada has done, what the Foreign Minister of Canada has done, the Foreign Minister of Canada on this program last week. Full-throated, unequivocal support for Israel to crush Hamas. That's what we should be doing. Instead, in the shadows, in the phone calls, through backroom diplomacy, we are stabbing Netanyahu in the back. We are undermining their efforts. Oh, I just wanted to point that out. And as soon as we have these interviews in a form and in a way that we can post them on Mark Levin Show Facebook and Mark Levin Show Twitter, we will do that. And I hope you, ladies and gentlemen, will take that, those links and spread them everywhere you can think of. Family, friends, strangers, neighbors, employees, whatever. And get the word out. This wasn't just some guest. This is the son of the founder and the leader of Hamas. And as I said, we worked all day to get that interview. We don't deserve a pat on the back. I'm just saying that he's not that available. Now, he may be after this interview, but he certainly wasn't today, was he, Mr. Producer? So since this morning we've been working on this, and I'm very pleased we were able to get it. 